Hello everyone. So I got one of these like spray paint can shakers off of Amazon a while back, thinking that it would get me to more thoroughly shake my spray paint cans because right now I just kind of shake it for 30 seconds and then just spray and you're supposed to shake it for a lot longer and you do get better finish if you do that. What I didn't realize when I got this is you still kind of have to sit there with a drill or something and spin it, and it really doesn't save you any time. I mean, sure, you could zip tie the little trigger closed, but it doesn't really work like that. So what I want to do in this video is fully automate this thing, throw a motor on it, and make this kind of a permanent solution to where I can just throw on a can of spray paint, hit a button, and then five minutes later I'll come back and it'll be done. So let's um, go take a closer look at this, and I'll go ahead and modify it. So here's a closer look at the components we're going to be using. We've got the um, actual paint shaker here, which is a relatively clever design. It just has this um, kind of offset wheel at the bottom, and so it moves in this kind of nice up and down and left to right motion, which is kind of cool. And it has all these bronze bushings everywhere, which is nice. We've got two little um, posts on the back. They're riveted in place. We're gonna use those probably for mounting. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just made to kind of um, clamp or screw down into a workbench. So that's what it looks like. And there is a little um, pipe clamp somewhere around here, right here. A little pipe clamp that goes through there and that's what actually holds the paint can on, but I just removed that for this purpose. So then what we're going to do is use a motor. I got this one from um, Servo City or Robot Zone. This is about 450 RPM, which is a little higher, a little faster than what they recommend, but it's mine. I can do what I want with it. So we're going to go a little bit faster. We've got this little coupler. So the way this thing is normally driven is it comes with like this um, hex key. It's just a quarter inch shaft. You know, this would go into a drill or into a driver. And then that actually just kind of conveniently goes into the back of an Allen head in the back of here. So put this in your drill, put that in there, spin it around. And the nice thing about this is it has a little bit of compliance to it. So this isn't a super rigid coupling, which is nice. So what we need to do is figure out a way to get this hex into this round coupler. Thankfully, a lathe makes pretty easy work of that. And then we have this little guy. This is, I'm not sure exactly what these are called, but I found out about these. It is basically just a little um, timed relay. So as you see, I have this program for five seconds. And if I hit this button, it stays on for five seconds and then clicks off. And so ideally this would be hooked up to the motor, press a button, goes for a length of time and then automatically shuts off. So this way I don't have to like set a timer on my phone or you know do anything like that. This will just control it. So first step here is to get this modified so it fits into the motor coupler. The hex key is a quarter inch and we need to get this down to six millimeter to fit into the shaft coupler. So it's really just kind of knocking off the outer edges and making it round. I'm of course doing this in the lathe, but you could do this with a drill press or even a hand drill and a file. Uh, there's really just not that much to take off and the hex key is a little bit hard, but a file would work perfectly fine for this. So I know that I have to go in about eight or nine millimeters and get it down to six millimeters. So there's just a piece of tape on there is my kind of stop. Nothing here is overly critical. This awkward over the shoulder overhead shot is supposed to somehow demonstrate my design process. I don't usually film stuff like this, but I figured why not. What I'm trying to do is just kind of figure out how exactly I'm going to fit all these pieces together, what the end result's going to look like. I know I've got those rivets on the front. So that's probably going to be my attachment point because I want to keep in line with the uh, motor axis. But beyond there, I'm not really sure where the controller, the you know time relay thing is going to go. So I'm just kind of making notes of everything, measuring things with the caliper. I've got this um, little angle ruler out. So I'm measuring you know the angles of this piece, and I'm just you know kind of going through and brainstorming to see if anything makes sense. I'm probably going to start out with just a basic motor mount just to get the motor on it so I can kind of see how that works and then I'll make it more complex and go from there. 
So now that I have a general idea of what my design is going to be, I need to start taking everything apart. I need to take it apart because the motor is going to fit kind of on this back section and everything's in the way. So I just need to take off kind of that bottom section and then I'm going to bring it over to the drill press and drill out the rivets. The rivets are going to end up being these bolts that kind of run through the whole thing, hold everything together. So we need to get the rivets out of there. It was pretty simple to just drill them out and now we have the whole thing completely apart. I tend to prototype a lot, especially when 3D printing is involved because you can of course print out the part, make a couple changes, print another one, make some changes and just kind of keep iterating like that. So what you're seeing here is just kind of the very first motor mount that I made, just kind of as a sandy check to see if this design is even going to work. I kind of want to know how the motor is going to be moving with the whole assembly, if it's going to shake itself loose, things like that. I'm just kind of, you know, doing a first run just to see if everything works the way I think it's going to work. So I finally got this together and I learned a couple things. Um, the first thing I learned is that these are awfully close to each other. I'm probably gonna have to add a little bit more of a gap there. Yeah, it's just really, really close. And I didn't put the key in there yet because I wanted to see what that gap looked like. So that's interesting. So I'll make these a little bit longer. Um, I initially made these as an 832 just so I could tap these posts and do exactly what I did, but eventually I'm going to be using this um, 1024 that will go the whole length of it and there'll be a nut on the back because obviously the 3D print is weak so it's going to snap right there. It's just going to pop off. So I'll have the um, bolt going through the whole length of it, no problem. And I was able to get this on and off like that. Um, it's kind of a compact design, but I can unscrew this and kind of pull this off just enough and move it out of the way. So I think this design will generally work. So I think the um, next step is to make the modifications on this and then cut this down to size. I made some modifications to the motor mount and while that prints out, I'm going to cut down the hex shaft with this highly modified little mini chop saw that I made. I haven't done a video on this yet, but this is fantastic for cutting down any kind of like hardened shaft, big bolts, things like that. And as you can see, it makes really quick work of just about anything. Okay, so I got the second motor mount printed out. This one's actually printed out of PETG, which you can see is a lot more flexible and compliant, which is gonna work better for this application. The original was PLA and this would eventually crack. It's just way, way, way too rigid. So PETG is better for this application. I didn't really show this previously, but I have a pocket on there. So that's where the motor kind of um, shoves in like that and it kind of keys into these flats on the face of the motor like that. So that fits in there. So that fits nice and snug. And this just kind of prevents the motor from wanting to torque back and forth. That will eventually just kind of wear all the um, fasteners loose, especially with all the vibration and shaking. It's ever so slightly longer than the previous one, so we should have no, I, no issue with this hitting in the right spot. And as you can see, it's definitely a lot beefier. The only issue that I had was when I kind of test fitted on here, this little radius, kind of hard to see, um, the radius right there, it kind of hits on the inside. So um, I'm gonna use this little tool and we're just going to kind of round those off a little bit. That'll give it a little bit of an extra clearance. So I have just a little bit of a chamfer on the edge of those. Cool. So now that should fit um, a lot better on there. And this one is a bit different than the original. Like I said previously, this one's going to have heat set inserts here on the back so that when the uh, screw goes through, the screw will go through all the way and then screw into the back on those heat set inserts. So let's get those installed and we can get this whole assembly together. Instead of these heat set inserts, I could have done a nut on the back side, but ironically, I didn't actually have any nuts in this size on hand, but I did have the heat set inserts. 
And heat set inserts are always kind of fun to use, just kind of melt them into it. And this is kind of a good use case for them because the screw is going to be pulling them in, which is going to be harder and harder to do. Sometimes if you're pulling them out, you know, the same way that you put them in, they can be relatively weak, but they're going to be pretty strong in this orientation and this application. And now I'm going to mount the actual motor to the motor mount. There's four, I think they're like M3 or M4 screws that go on the face of it. And because of the pocket and the keying feature that I did, these won't be really be seeing a lot of load, but there's still going to be a fair amount of vibration. So I'm using some Loctite, pushing the motor into the mount, fastening those, and then we can mount this whole thing to the shaker assembly. So I've got this all connected and mechanically it feels really good. This is going to work out well. Here is what I came up with for the electronics housing. I know it's a bit weird. It's not exactly what I was thinking either. Kind of with like the open frame aesthetic of this whole thing, I decided to kind of continue that for the controller. So this just kind of snaps in place, slides on over the end of the motor. There is um, a set screw there and one on the opposing side. So you can kind of like, I don't know, adjust this. I don't know why you really need to, but you can kind of adjust this. And then the controller itself just kind of snaps in place. So that's kind of what it's gonna look like. And then we have a barrel jack for power that will go in this little um, hole at the end right there. So barrel jack, so you plug in power, Power will go into this thing. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a little slot right down there. So that little slot there goes inside this kind of uh, motor cavity. Yeah, right there. So that slot goes down inside. All the wiring is done. There is a fair amount of room. There's about that much worth of room um, for this barrel jack to go in, get wired up to the controller, back down into the motor. So we're going to see if all of that wiring actually fits. So yeah, let me um, get this whole thing wired up and that installed and we will be done. So I pretty much hated every minute of wiring this up. It's kind of fiddly and I really don't like that it has those really terrible screw terminals which come out in a weird spot as you'll see here in a second but everything's relatively easy we come into the barrel jack come up to the module and then I'm using a Wago connector I'm kind of cheating a little bit that um, buses out the positive down to the motor and into the little relay module as well so yeah pretty straightforward but I could have given myself just a little bit more room and here's what I mean about that little screw terminal because the wires come out one end, but if you're trying to fit it nice into this little bezel like I have, they kind of get in the way. So I had to take off the little back cover just to give me a little bit more clearance to squeeze this into the hole. But once everything was together and kind of squeezed in, it did end up working. So here it is in all of its glory with some spray paint attached to it. I currently have it set for five seconds. I have this plugged into my bench power supply. It's only connected on the one side, so I'm going to kind of hold the other side because it does kind of wiggle a little bit. But if we just hit the power button. Runs really nice. And all I need to do is set this for five minutes, plug it into power, hit the button, and I will have perfectly shaked, shaken, shook, spray paint every single time. So yeah, all the design files will be listed down below. All of this will be available on printables if you want to do this same thing. Um, this you can grab on Amazon. It's a, you know, it's a nice little thing. I could probably make my own, but eh, I'd probably spend more time than it's really worth. So as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.